man. Oh, there's kids skating in there. How you doing? Pretty good, what's your name? Jonathan. Yeah, day one, nice to meet you, Jonathan. Jonathan, like, you were skating past me, I'm like, oh shit, that's day one. <laughs> I saw your DECA video. Oh, the old one? Yeah. yeah. It's a long time ago, it's so crazy that it's so long ago. It was eight, uh, seven years ago. Time flies, man, Just, hey, take advantage, dude. Don't do it, don't. Okay. All right, we'll get the, we'll redo the courthouse, the, like, thing that, like, <laughs> the courthouse thing that. <laughs> people would do lines back then, and then people would, after they'd do the line, people would follow them, like, yeah, start cheering. At the end of Carol's Park, you see that. Yeah, And yeah. Goldfish, I think. Skating has changed. In that way, a lot, it seems yeah. like. Got so serious. <laughs> well, that was huge. That's good, man. Just keep skating. Don't even worry. And like stuff like that too. Don't even worry about. Like, don't ever sweat. Like, hey, is this good enough or is that good enough? Like, as long as you're happy with it, it's fine. Yeah, he's not intimidated to be around. He's cool. He makes you feel like you're hanging out. All right, welcome back to the show. This week I went out to Los Angeles. Met up with Day One Song. Day One brought along Daniel Castillo, and uh, we went to some of the spots that those guys filmed for the video Love Child which was really kind of a trip for me because I felt like I went in some time machine and went into this video that was really important to me as a skater in the early 90s. I think Love Child marked a change for world industries and a change for skateboarding in general. It was just really different. It was like these city kids all skating these street spots and schoolyards in like 80s like Santa Cruz speed wheels kind of skating or like white kids skateboarding. I don't know, we just looked at some of the spots those guys skated and. That's all, this is the day one song episode. I hope you enjoy it. All right, so I'm trying to think where we should go first. Seventh Street is an old classic spot, but I think people have seen enough of that place. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The best spots were the ones that are just, you can't even believe it, hours and hours of skating went on. Can we describe it real quick? This is the school, like, at the end of Rubbish Heap, when Rodney's uh, part ends, his part, Jeremy Klein runs and focuses his board, gives him a street board, and he comes out here and ollies that. Pretty insane, like, pretty crazy to think about. And he does a couple other things on the street. Board. It feels so weird, it's so big. Like, I watched Rubbish Heap and I was like, man, the world never even interested me whatsoever. I was more of like a Z-boy Dogtown kind of guy, like, for where I grew up. Around our neighborhoods, Daniel grew up in a fucked up part of Culver City, man. Off Stoner Boulevard near the project, whoo. Yeah, I think definitely if I didn't skate, there would have been a chance I probably would have done drive-bys. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I got shot, man. I was just at a party in the wrong place at the wrong time, pretty much. They thought me and my friends were a bunch of gangsters, probably, and they just unloaded on us, like, two cars. But no, nah, I always stayed far from that, man. Like, skating is so good for kids that grow up in, like, kind of bad neighborhoods, you know what I mean? Like, cause it gets them like psyched on something else rather than what's going on around them. First got sponsored by World Industries. I'm still in the same, uh, under the same distribution. Like where World started is where I'm still at. It was the first place I've ever gotten, where I first got sponsored and, and I'm still at the same company. It's pretty crazy to think about. Daniel, how old were you? 14, 13, yeah, so I was like 15 or 16. Man, I miss those days. Like in 92, when they had revamped the whole team and like a lot of the guys that had been on it took off, it was like me, Kareem, Shiloh, Chico, Spencer, Daniel. That's pretty insane. Yeah, like all the, the people uh, that were in Love Child were totally city kids. Like, you know, me and Kareem used to skate a lot together when we were younger. And he was like, yeah, there's some new guy in World Industries. And I was like, who? And he was like, some dude named Dewan. <laughs> and then I was like, Dewan? I was like, what nationality is he? And this is what Kareem said. Kareem was like, oh, he's some nigga. I don't know. <laughs> okay, you're going to trip out on this. First world ad ever. This is the Telegrab One Foot, that first uh, white power ad. 
Yeah, we had our first ad together, me, him, and Kareem. It was pretty funny. Spike Jones actually shot the photos. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> and it probably took like an hour. <laughs> it was pretty awesome back then. When we got on, Spike was pretty much in charge. He was the one doing the ads and shooting, so went over to Torrance High. Daniel did a little tail grab one foot. Kareem did like a 540 and... What did you do, Daniel? On the same bank? And I had a tail grab shove it. Dude, I guess... I wonder, no wonder I couldn't pick up any other sponsors. So it started right here. Recreated, exactly. Dude, I don't think I could do it again. <laughs> Wait, did you go down a slide in it? No, that was, that was the beginning of my part where I go down the slide, and then it's like the line after that. Oh, yeah, It's yeah, right I'm after the, it's, it's, the it's, it's the slide, and then right after that is this line where I do a front pop. All right, we got to skate through. So I'll just skate through it. I'll just tell you what I did. Is that cool? <laughs> Front pop went down there. Huge one. And then my board was set up. I did a nollie tray flip. Back then, I didn't even know it was a nollie tray flip. I just thought it was some sort of nollie and then flinged around. Then I did the old faithful, like, back 180, and then switch 180. 360 ollie over this. But I landed it. I did the worst kick flip ever right here. 360 flip right there. And I went off this bump. Bump with the manhole was a double flip. Then I did a poor, poor excuse for a pop shove it right here. You're gonna watch it back and go, wow, that's lame. Then I was like, oh, it's really coming now. I'm gonna prep up for this. Then I'll eat up these and just went huge with a Switch 540 big flip. But they didn't get that one, so I just ended up doing a heel flip shove it. Hey, when, when I did that line where there are a lot of lines, I think it was like, it tripped people up because they were like, hey, are you allowed to do lines like long like that? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you kind of took a minute to get down to the grand finale, heel flip, shove it, that looked terrible. Yay! Love Child was random. Three tours plus maybe filming for like a month straight and that's it. Where now it's like, oh god, I gotta film with seven different people, hope I can get the footage, blah blah blah. Film for a year, you know? Did you like it better then? I liked it better then. It seemed more like I was just skating and all of a sudden I had a video part. Yeah, I remember being super psyched on that little hard flip over this little gap that he did. It was super sick looking. The worst hard flip ever documented? Well, what's so bad about it? It was the first one ever documented. <laughs> It was the first, but it was the worst, so it's, it's cool. So it's like first and worst. Back then, too, I didn't even know what it was. All I knew is I had to meal kick the fuck out of my back front foot and just move it out of the way, and if you shot a photo, there would definitely be three frames of just a, something that just did not look right. But you had never heard of anyone doing that trick? No, you know what? I actually did hear of one person who did it, this guy Dan Gallagher. Rodney was saying that yeah, he thinks he did it. And I'm pretty sure he did do it, but I don't want to give him full credit. But who's but who got it on footage first? Over a huge gap. You got your fish with you? Because you're going to... There's Burl. God, they need Gardner. This was a really popular spot back in, like, 93. This place is, like, of one place that, like, it goes way back from, like, the rubbish heap Jeremy Klein days where he came here... He came here and I think did the best stuff ever. They put a pole at the bottom of the, the one that everybody used to skate and we still skated it. Jeremy Klein had some stuff in it a long time ago and some old video. And then now, what do you call it? They put poles all over it and put those benches to really just kill it. Rick Howard had a bunch of stuff here that was good too. So that's pretty Rick good. Howard had a cover, Switch 360. Yeah, it was on that wall. Gino actually had like a fakie hard that was amazing. And then this is what they call, we call the vortex, the V. And there was a lot of stuff that went down here. Jeremy Klein did some stuff that was, he did like frontside flip in a birdhouse video and then he did like backside flip. The main bank that everybody skated was the one right next to that railing. And that's the main one. If you watch like the old video with, with uh, in New World Order where Daniel's sitting at the top of that bank over there. And I do a like 
some weird trick where I didn't hit my tail. Hey, remember I do the Howard heel right there, and then you're like talking? That's first try, but I didn't hit my tail. Dude, that was fucking sick, dude. The skating is sick. He's the best in the world. Yeah, I would never leave my area. Plus, well, back then, I felt as though everything was right, you know, right out your front door. You didn't have to go far for curbs. <laughs> yeah. People traveling around the world for curbs. This is Alta Vista. The curb's still waxed. See, I gotta get out and try to hard flip it 5-0 it again. <laughs> Should we stop and get out? Yeah, let's get out. Tim Gavin had a fakey tray, fakey nose grind on here. It's insane. <laughs> I'm actually like, we should be coming here on those days that we don't have nowhere to go. This one was in New World Order. So there was like a hard flip 50180, and then there was a. Everything was filmed from pretty much that angle to where you're at. Thing's huge still. You got a marker? Because I kind of want to write down what's been done. <laughs> don't you hate that? I've been to so many spots where people write down what they've done. It's mainly like when it's like steep walls or something like tail block, backside tail block. What did Richard have on it? I know, we can't remember anything Richard had, man. Richard had so much stuff, it's hard to remember. Didn't you lose your virginity here, Daniel? <laughs> <I'm just like laughs> yeah, right, you lost your virginity at Kareem's. Yeah, dude, the world parks, the craziest stuff would happen at that place. So many random chicks would show up and... And there was a quarter pipe. There was quarter pipes, they had the beast wall, like... There was actually a bunch of stuff. They had a big six-foot mini ramp. Like in 92 and 93, that's where I think the, the most like innovative skating went down within like Gino and like Keenan and everybody. And you just seen the craziest stuff go down. You actually watch somebody do something new. You know what I mean? It was crazy. I'm sure we've stayed at every one of these little motels. Like Rocco used to put us in like, yep, you guys are staying here. He would just put us in random places or just give us money. Like one dude money, the, the oldest one, which was probably like 15. The responsibility to get us a room. And then once the world park came along, that's what end, it ended up being our like little place to stay. Yeah, remember the Imperial double set? Oh, shit. <laughs> Dude, Daniel calling it out. Jeremy Ray all he did, flawless. He's Jeremy Ray though, he could probably backside flip it now. I all he did with sock filming, but I, it wasn't like, a, it was like you ollie, you know when you ollie and you lean back and one leg goes up? And then I fell, and I asked, I remember telling Sock, like, you can't cut it. It was always like, it's so funny asking somebody that question, like, can you cut it? Hey, is this how Wallenberg looks? Like, one more? I guess so. You've never been there? No. Nah. Yeah, he's kept himself in, like, the whole South Bay area his entire life, as far as skateboarding goes, you know? If I look back at, like, think about all the video footage and stuff from just the years past, it's, it's all there. I don't think I've ever really noticed it, too. Do it wherever you want to, you know? That's what I say. This is the place, like, after I kick flipped it in Love Child, we came back from, and I tried to frontside flip it. And then the board, I don't know if Sox still has the footage, but I stepped on the nose and it completely smacked me in my face. Jeremy Ray really killed that thing. Fakie Hill, frontside flip, nollie backside flip, everything. See? It's pretty long, because he took three steps on the flat part. Pretty tall guy too. This thing's huge. <laughs> guy switched traded one day and uh, some dude, he forgot to film it. I don't even think Guy was probably, Guy was probably like, ah, oh well. I think I had done, I did it like once without filming and I went back to film it and I think like, you know, I don't know, maybe it took a lot of tries and the camera ran out of batteries or the footage got messed up or something. And it is very important to like document this stuff, but I mean, it's not what it's all about, you know what I mean? That's nuts. That I ain't going off no long tramp off the top of this baby. And they didn't make like a, a little baby ramp too. They made like a three and a half foot kicker. Yeah. When they go, they go big, you know? To switch trade though, that's nuts. And at that time too, like, that was like 93, right? 93. Well, it was underground at the same time, too. You had to wait a year and a half to ever see any new skating, you know? We didn't have YouTube. We didn't have, like, you know, there wasn't... You couldn't just go to, like, somebody's site and watch all this new footage that's came out, like, within the last week. So we're headed to the Imperial Blocks. These were the hubbas for us in the, in the like, 92 and 93. No, we used to skate these ones. 
Oh wait, or was it those ones? <laughs> it's pretty nuts. Like coming back to spots like this and thinking about like all the stuff you couldn't do and still can't do probably. I tried a lot of shit I couldn't do, but there was a couple of guys that came here and was, I think Rick was trying to do like a front side half cap flip crooked grind maybe or something back in those days, which was like nuts to even think about. And then in the plan B video, he had like front side half cap flip the hard way. So like a back 50 or 5-0. I think Henry Ambertino did backs 180 heel faking nose grind on that one. Jerron switching word heel switch 5-0, that's pretty nuts too. It's so funny how so much stuff went down like that back then, but you've seen so much crazy stuff like that back then that nothing really, everything just went by. It wasn't like you had one good thing in your part. You watch people's parts and everything was good. So you were just like, yeah, that was good, that was good, that was good, that was good, his part's over, okay. From like 94 to like 95, I just was over it. Hung out in Long Beach all the time. Shallow had told me later, like Rodney and them were hitting him up, like, Dewan's not skating anymore, he's doing something else. And Rodney was telling Shallow, like, hey, we might have to kick him off. And Shallow was telling me, he was telling him, dude, you can't kick Dewan off, man. He'll skate, he's gonna skate. And I came back and called Rodney. I was like, look, I'm sorry for not being around, but I'm back and I'm gonna try to work on trying to get something going. You know what I mean? I, uh, I always knew that that guy can, he probably could never quit skating. You know, like, he loves to do it so much. <laughs> and that's when we started filming and I did the whole trilogy part. It put me back on the map. You know what I mean? So there was nothing left to really skate. Everything got skate stopped. Everything got blocked. All the curbs just were curbs. Ended up going to some school, putting tables downstairs, and we never got hassled. So I was like, look, I guess this is where it's all going to happen now. It was almost like a new type of skating for me. Like, now I'm going to focus on this, you know? Um, yeah, I remember later then seeing footage of day one and be like, oh, I thought they said he didn't skate anymore. You know, and he was fucking ripping. I know, I remember when he was doing all the picnic table shit, but I mean, I always thought he was gnarly, you know? But, you know, there's only so many picnic tables you can see. I don't know. I got a lot of shit for the picnic table thing for a while. There was no way of how people try to erase things out of their life, and that will be there forever to haunt me, which I'm not ashamed of it. I used to love the whole picnic table thing, but I'm just, you know, it just got a little, I went a little too overboard. I went on a tour and my nickname, because in Australia was like the picnic table wizard. <laughs> they would have picnic tables specifically there, so when I came, I remember one of the guys came up to me and was like, day one, man, I'm stoked you're here, man. We're sorry we couldn't get you the picnic table. <laughs> and I was like, well, God damn it, there's nothing I can do here then, I'm out. But my whole problem is I get caught up and I overdo it, like eating too much cake. If you give me a whole cake, I'll eat the whole thing. And it drives people nuts. They're like, dude, please, no more. And he was real crazy into like, like the benches. Yeah, I hit those spots, but I wouldn't, like the way this guy looks at shit is so crazy. Like he would be like, oh, you could skate. I made this spot and you could skate it like this and that. And I'll look at the spot. I'm like, how, how did you even get that from you know, I don't look at it like that. He'll take it to an extreme, man. Like, and I think that's the way he does things. You know, he gets into something and he just sticks with it for till he burn, till he burns it out for himself. You know. Honestly, he's on a different level than anybody. I mean, like, well, there's only like a few guys up there that are like at the same level, like Costin and like Reynolds and like all the, those kind of guys. You know, and then there's like, then there's like, like the middle, like me, <laughs> like. They one's definitely on the top. Round three, he skated those, uh, top of those fucking big rigs, right? And he was telling me like, oh, I made this, you know, I'm doing this big rig thing. You should come down, dude, like, switch back, heal it. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, hell no. <laughs> that shit is like, death defying. I've been just trying to have fun with it, you know? It's just, oh. it's, it's real easy to stay motivated as long as you just kind of put yourself into a new place. Like the mini, the whole cheese and crackers thing, that was just all fun. Three months of just fun, and then we ended up getting a video out of it. That's how Love Child was, you know? So do you think something like cheese and crackers couldn't have come out in like the mid-90s? No, I don't think nobody would have cared. And plus, when they said Vert died in those days, it really did. Even anything to do with it, even if it was just mini ramp or tranny, people were dead serious. Like, nobody wanted to see it. You know, Costin, he did a 360 tail grab fakey nose grind revert in an H Street video. People don't talk about that. The turnaround, it's come, it's come back to that point now where I think tranny is, it's cool again, you know? Hey, do you truck dollies like that, Liz? Mm-hmm. 
Oh, that's just how you skate them? Mm -hmm. I always think of like tech skating and everyone's got pipe drives. That's what everybody thinks, but I couldn't do a nose wheelie unless my truck was that loose. Plus these days, I don't know. It's like Matt Rodriguez with his truck. Like yeah, that. he has both. Because only one of mine's like that. And then my oh, other. the other one's tight? Mm -hmm. Whoa. Matt Rodriguez does both. Mm -hmm. That dude's nuts. Maybe. It's just nuts that like, there's people out there that are so good at one thing, but they're afraid to admit it. There's a couple of pros right now that are afraid to admit that they're good at vert, or the, to admit that they used to skate vert. I'm not gonna say any names, but you guys know who you are. One dude is not afraid though, is Channy.